So I'm Sarah Fitzgerald. I'm an MLA student at Berkeley. I'm Katie Pitstick. I'm an MLA student at the University of Pennsylvania. And we're so Katie, do you want to start us off maybe with a little, a little bit of the history of how this came about? Mm -hmm. Well, first I want to say that it is a collaborative process mm -hmm. and like that we have been working with students um, all across the U.S., particularly Harvard and RISD and Wash U, but, this, but we've created this letter this summer and it's expanded and there's like 500 plus signatures from multiple universities. So. Yeah, it's been really exciting seeing, like mm -hmm. I pulled up on my phone just to kind of give people an idea, there's like, you know, Ball State and mm -hmm. uh, LSU. There's Kentucky, uh, just like the so many diverse schools, and I think that really speaks to the fact that this is an issue that really transcends regions. People in our generation are realizing that, you know, if we want to be practicing landscape architects in the future, we really have to change how business is done, and we think ASLA has the power to make some of these changes, which is why the letter was addressed to them mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, and the history. I mean, Sarah can speak more to this than I can, but. Um, I was in school and I, I am in school with like Billy Fleming teaches there and he would written an article about landscape architecture and its place with climate change which I was asking him how I can like, connect with other people in my age to like kind of progress the field to kind of combat climate change in a way together and he hooked me up with Sarah and her work in Berkeley. Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. That was a really exciting article. It was kind of like this watershed moment for a lot of us that have been feeling mm -hmm. this anxiety about this new profession that we're excited about, while at the same time this kind of eco-anxiety that we're all experiencing. And mm -hmm. I think Billy did a really good job articulating kind of the, the subtleties of how landscape architecture talks mm -hmm. about these issues a lot, but how we feel pretty unprepared to really tackle them the way that landscape architecture is practiced right now. Um, yeah. So with, with that, do we want to get into some of the specifics? Yeah, I mean, we, we worked over this over the summer with students from Harvard and, uh, and other schools, as we mentioned, and we can, yeah, let's w walk through the demands, I guess. Yeah, that sounds good. So the first demand is about endorsing and help defining the Green New Deal. And mm -hmm. I want to start with this one, especially given that the um, ASLA set up the Student Climate Change Forum last night, and th I think that was a really good response and showed that ASLA is mm -hmm. taking this seriously. Um, you know, it was 45 minutes and I think a lot of people still have things to say, and so I do want to plug the fact that you can check out our Twitter handle, um, Adapt ASLA, and there's a link to a survey there if you wanted to tell ASLA how you think we can better mm -hmm. um, situate ourselves as landscape architects to attack the climate crisis. But yeah. essentially, in, in getting at this, help define the Green New Deal. I think this is really critical because the Green New Deal, as it is being still fairly young and aspirational, okay. like really what is legislation but, um, but a way to define it? And mm -hmm. I think that that's a big hole that potentially ASLA could help fill is either by helping write um, Actually, I don't want to steal this from you. Can no. you can you talk a little bit about like what you guys are up to at Penn and how that could be a, an yeah. example of because we we supporting after, this work. after last night we after the climate forum that ASLA hosted we did meet with some other students this morning and we kind of hashed out some next steps and really Sarah and I both wanted to talk more about the Green New Deal because though it was mentioned at the forum they have not officially proclaimed a, like a support of it and they and they say because it is an aspirational kind of movement but we think that we can actually create a like, policy or like an outline for the Green New Deal to move forward once there is political backing. Um, and what we're doing at Penn currently is we have a studio called Design for the, for the Green New Deal and Billy Fleming is leading it and we are, and what he's doing also Data for Progress is writing policy that, that we can give to AOC, potentially Bernie Sanders if he were to be elected, and to allow them to immediately hit the ground running once um, we get political backing from the de like Democratic nominee. Um, so that, I think what ASLA could do is potentially do the similar thing where we create a policy like for like public spaces so that these politicians can then start to implement these on a larger federal scale. Mm -hmm. Or like put another way, you know, lobbyists of the oil and gas industry have been writing our legislation mm -hmm. and handing it to, you know, office aides for decades at this point, and yep. we think that 
you know, landscape architecture has a lot to say about how we can respond to the climate crisis and if we could either have, you know, ASLA dedicated resources or if ASLA could help fund these kind of think mm -hmm. tanks that yep. could produce these documents, that could be a really strong way to help define the Green New Deal and, and get on board from, from the ground level. Yeah, and, and Michael said this last night at the forum, but we are been acting pretty res like responsive to issues that are happening with policy and, adv and I know we're like active in advocacy, but it is a response of advocacy and it's not as much proactive. And I think we have the potential as professionals to suggest like policy. Yeah, through design, agreed. like Agreed, agreed. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a really good, good um, way to kind of talk about mm -hmm. this, this ask. And then the second one, assert our commitment to the public realm. Um, I think this one came up over the summer as being a really uh, kind of strong theme in the conversations mm -hmm. that we were having about how our public realm is constantly being challenged and underfunded uh, and how this is a pretty easy way for ASLA mm -hmm. to kind of both um, bolster our, our presence and our commitment to public spaces and also address climate change. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to add anything to that one? <laughs> I mean, I think that this was de generally supported by most people in ASLA. This is a pretty easy ask, But the, yeah. the thing, is, like, words are one thing, but we, d I mean, there are a lot of us that are in the private sector um, and do private sector work. And I think that this meant, like, this was also conversed about today, about, like, when do you, or do you do not or take work? Like, what kind of work do you kind of question before you just accept it as, like, oh, I'm, like, one, the student today was, like, we should be able to, like, sometimes we can clean up pipelines, gas line easements, stuff like that. It's like, should we be taking that kind of work where we're destroying a wetland than to only get money to, re like, redesign a wetland, so. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And I think embedded in this demand in the letter is mm -hmm. kind of our nod to this idea of retreat and, and refusal, how mm -hmm. uh, collectively, kind of in the same vein as the, um, Oh, I'm gonna stick my foot in my mouth. I'm not sure if it was the architecture <laughs> lobby or if it was a different organization that, when the border wall, um, it was Arc call, Lobby. Yeah. Arc Lobby. Okay. When the design mm -hmm. call went out, essentially it was um, a, an act of solidarity to proclaim that we're not gonna lend our services as designers mm -hmm. to that kind of design challenge. And I think this this demand kind of touches on how. It yeah. might be appropriate not to build sometimes and not to take work and you know it's easy for us to say as students and I think maybe this this idea of retreat and refusal of work isn't one that ASLA directly yeah. um, deals with but it's more of trying to get this idea out into landscape architecture as a discipline as well. Yeah and just be more mindful of the projects that you take on especially in the p private realm. Yeah. 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 Cool. And then kind of running through the letter for even further, um, advocating for climate science and curricula and licensure. Uh, I'd love for you to start with this one, oh. having more professional experience oh. than I do. The, yeah, this was kind of a lot of what I had pushed into the, <laughs> to the letter because I do have um, a licensure um, in a couple of states. But I guess coming, like I have an undergrad degree from the University of Illinois, and then I took seven years and then returned to school, and I guess I feel like, and though it is definitely progressing and is definitely getting better, and there's a lot of talk about climate change in within the schools as of now, I think a little bit more um, advanced conversations about climate, especially science-based. Um, we need to be working with ecologists. Yeah. We need to be talk. We need to be learning from scientists and ecologists, and even like engineers, unfortunately, because they are doing a lot of the work um, with climate science, like climate change design. So. I have been a little bit dis like looking at all the schools across the board, not the ones that I've attended, but I have been disappointed in our lack of interdisciplinarity conversations and like openness to take s classes outside of design. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I don't, you can also speak to this too because you're in school, but and we're all in school. And I think that was a lot of what a lot of people were disappointed in on the letter. But and I'll, I'll, we'll go back to school, but like licensure is the same thing, where having had taken the test, it is really focused on traditional landscape architect construction techniques. Uh, we could influence what students learn by applying other structure to that, such as like, can we talk about, you know, like sea walls or like, can we talk about levees? Can we talk about these kind of like more climate, coastal climate adaption techniques and hmm. within licensure? But if you want to talk about like 
what you felt about school or anything? Or? Yeah, I think this uh, lack of interdisciplinarity is, mm -hmm. is pretty crucial and something that came up for a lot of people over the summer discussions. Um, and I think that like at Penn you have like a climate action group and a student from the oh, University yeah. of Oregon has come up with this mm -hmm. like cross-disciplinary climate action group that kind of focuses on how can we have these conversations with people who are not strictly designers, uh, could be planners, could be people in business school, could be people yes. in real estate development, like we've, it's really an all hands on deck moment mm -hmm. and we need to learn to be politically engaged as well as, uh, you know, at the drafting table coming up with beautiful functional designs. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the ethos of this letter too, is that while climate adaptation and climate mitigation and climate action happens on the site scale, it can't just be the site mm -hmm. scale for like effective um, systems change essentially is, is a lot of what we're concerned with. Yeah, um, yeah. cool. Um, what and wrap ups? I mean, do you want to go into any of our other more specific demands or? Yeah, yeah, we can touch uh -huh. on those. I think <laughs> it was a little bit, um, you know, it, it was great that ASLA responded to our letter with yeah. a blog post, but I would push back and say that no, 16 of the 18 demands are not quite being met, <laughs> and we want to push uh, to kind of elevate that there's always more to be done. Um, specifically, one of the demands was uh, your idea about extending mm -hmm. um, continuing education credits. That was, that was Billy's idea originally. That, okay. he, that he posted to our group, mm -hmm. and I definitely picked up. And, was, and I think having having a license, you are more ready to see like what CEUs can and cannot do for you, and how much they are like they take time. Mm -hmm. And it'd be great if they were more proactive in right kind of cha cha challenging the system and like. So like if you could use political activism or like community organizing as kind of those yeah, credits. Yeah, more action oriented CEUs would be great instead of like typically what's happening with continuing education is that it is like another landscape architecture is like on video kind of telling you about something. And it would be great if you could actually be an act, see like an action like community mm -hmm. engagement or like, you know, going door to door for like a political like leader that supports say the Green New Deal should like these things should be applicable to continuing education. Yeah. I think action oriented continuation would be great. Definitely. And something that's been really exciting about coming to the conference and having this forum is that we've met a lot of other students who might have not uh, we wouldn't have had contact with to write the letter, but more ideas are surfacing about yes. how we can, mm -hmm. you know, combat this climate crisis uh, as a field. And I really do want to encourage people to both use that link that we talked about on our Twitter handle, which is AdaptASLA, but also if you go to our, our website, ASLAadapt.com, uh, mm -hmm. you can send an email to us and we're, we're posting responses um, to the question, what does the Green New Deal look like for landscape architecture? Some ideas that came up that weren't specific demands on our list were mm -hmm. like this idea of um, celebrating local gains, like maybe a new award category mm -hmm. that has to do yeah, with climate resiliency. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, or what was the, there was another one that someone came up with that I thought was really good last night. Um, this might be part of the cutting, <laughs> the <laughs> editing of this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. A lot of people have been really getting on to someone saying, uh, like bracing alternative ways to be a landscape architect. That, yeah. And like, and not, we don't always have to be in a firm. We can do other things. We can be community leaders. We can like, I mean, I actually had a very alternative kind of way to get through this uh, field. <laughs> so I, I'm like, I've always thought that was there, but I guess like maybe promoting that through like academia and professional world, like that we can do other things mm -hmm. and like propping alternative professions at these conferences would be a great way to start to do that. Definitely. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Also, one more um, kind of action item mm -hmm. that wasn't on our specific demand list was having the student representatives on the board of trustees have a vote. I didn't realize that it was all symbolic. We're like, um, it would be great to kind of bolster the, the student mm -hmm. voice in these conversations because it is an issue that greatly disproportionately affects younger generations. And I think having that um, that viewpoint in these kind of inner circle meetings is really crucial. So that is an easy first step that I would mm. be really interested to, to see happen internally. Um, and yeah, I guess I, I wanted to mention that I am 
like it is heartening to see ASLA so quickly, you know, provide the student forum and. You know, when Dee Miller, uh, the president-elect, talked to us briefly and was encouraging last night. So, so there are good things to celebrate within mm -hmm. uh, within this really large organization. And celebrating those wins, I think, is just and, as important. And professionals as are doing some great work out there. Exactly. So exactly. Like, so, but we don't want to erase that work. Celebrating what we've done that is good, and maybe being a little more critical about the things uh, that are happening that maybe shouldn't be. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Definitely for sure. both. Definitely. And I think that's. Part of the reason that we're so disheartened when we've been to a couple uh, lectures today in which people brought up like climate change, but we won't get into that. I know it's a politically divisive issue. And okay, we're, we don't live under a rock, we know it's politically divisive, <laughs> but I feel like we really want to stress that it will affect everyone. And to keep treating it like a Republican Democrat issue is yeah. so frustrating. And we're trying to say, by endorsing the Green New Deal, we don't think that that's like a partisan act. We think that is an act that bolsters our reputation as landscape architects and gets us in the door to talk about these really meaningful issues that will define landscape architecture in the future. Like if we don't help set this conversation and set the tone, we will become less and less vital to addressing these issues. So I think we Unless really want to stress just the, the same way that this is like an mm -hmm. inter, um, inter-university kind of initiative. This is also an across the aisle issue that we're trying to, to mm -hmm. get the, the message across that I think that the organization is scared that by pushing the Green New Deal, they look to be partisan, but we as the next generation are saying, we can't afford not to. Like by not taking a stance, that is a stance in fact. Uh, so I think making that point very clear is another, another um, desire with this letter. Yeah, but all, yeah, and also like embracing the Green New Deal would bring in younger students and, young, and younger professionals to come in, like you were saying. Like, yeah, yeah. And again, we, I don't want to. I don't want the organization to feel like we are demonizing them. In fact, like we explicitly call out the Blue Ribbon Panel is a really great initiative. Uh, they've highlighted some good work, like the Carbon Calculator, the yeah. positive, uh, Climate Positive Design Challenge. Like there are good things going on, but we are also the future membership, and we are trying to signal that these are the kinds of things that we're looking for this organization to to lead on if uh, they hope for us to be members moving forward. And so uh, if you would like to read the letter, read the more specific demands, and email us, you can go to ASLAadapt.com, join the conversation. Uh, we'd really love to highlight the diversity of ideas that are coming out around this question. Of